Okay, so here's a quick overview of working with some of the red raw uh, mat files that are provided in the CineCloud Dropbox. So once you've downloaded the uh, entire add-on suite or just a few files, uh, I just want to show you the flexibility you have with working with the red raw files. Now, in this case, I have uh, some footage here, and I'm just going to go to uh, LUT Master and add just a color preset just to give this a little bit of a dramatic look. So she has a lot of darkness around her. I think kind of a uh, bleach preset's gonna look dramatic for the uh, for the situation. I'm gonna grab Silver Beacon. And that looks good. All right, so now with the anamorphic creams or the cine dust or any future add-ons you're gonna get the raw files and I will provide the QuickTime ProRes and a smaller compressed H.264 now with the ProRes and H.264 those have uh, just a kind of a flat neutral color tone to it so it's just gonna give you uh, a little flexibility to move the blacks and the whites uh, however you see fit so I don't want to really crunch the color I felt like I want to give you that option so in this case if I go to a QuickTime ProRes file or if this was an H.264 I'm just gonna grab a Cine Dust uh, Bokey Winds Let's see how this looks alright so I'm just gonna add this Bokey Winds Cine Dust mat over my footage and you can see it's just a kind of a subtle stream of dust here and anytime you add any of these mats on you're going you're going to want to highlight the mat itself and go into your effects controls and in your opacity settings you're going to change the blending mode to add what you can do from here is if you wanted to just shift the uh, blacks a little bit you can get your curves or in this case I'll get my levels I'm gonna drag and drop my levels on top of my cine dust bokey winds and let's see when that So with the neutral color on these mats, which again are going to look very flat if you look at them raw, um, it's going to give you a little a little bit of an atmospheric tone. But if you wanted to crunch those darks, you can just go into your black input here and start to uh, get rid of that. And you can see that the dust is just going to be a little bit more pronounced. Okay, so that's just a simple tweak using your your levels and adjusting the the blacks right, so I'm going to delete that and let me get into using the red raw files so we have the Cine Dust 8k so these are the 8k files that are shot with the red weapon so they're going to be very very large and you know if you're working in a 1080p or 4k uh, project you're still going to have an incredible amount of flexibility to scale the uh, mats and, and play around with the look of, of each map provided okay So we see that we have this little stream of dust going on and first before I do any type of blending I want to show you inside Premiere you are going to see a tab that says master. So when you highlight the master control you're going to see your red source settings. Now these are all the color uh, profile settings for the shot so you can change everything from you know the red gamma you can change it to red log film I mean everything within this data file that you can change the color the tone the look so you have a lot of room to just work on the design of 
how you want this mat to project over your footage. If I go down to curves here, and if I just really wanted to set a different tone, and let's just say I boosted up my reds and drop the greens down to zero, you know, this is going to have a totally different look. So you can see really quick by just playing with the uh, red source settings, there's a lot you can change and get a very different look than just using the QuickTime Pro Res or the H.264. I mean, you can work around uh, with those types of files too, add in different effects, but uh, it's a little bit more work where, but everything's built within the red source settings so you can manipulate and change you know, your color, exposure, whatever you wish. So just bumping up the ISO to 1280, you can see a lot more uh, particles that are showing up. So that's just a quick note of working with the red files. Now I'm just going to go back to uh, how this originally was shot. And I can do that by going up top here, select as shot. It's going to bring me back to this. And what I'm going to do is move out of the uh, master settings tab, go back into my effect control tab. And in the opacity, I'm just going to select add. And I'm going to keep the just the original look for now might be a little too much. Let me just bring that down a little bit. Okay. It's a little bit better. And of course we can just add a little bit more dust design. Now let's see what we got here. We'll do like a, a dusty lens here and just give it a little bit of grime. I do want to note that uh, depending on your project setting, you may want to right click, select scale to frame size to whatever your project is. So if you're working on 1080p or 4K and, and you don't have uh, this selected, you know, you're just going to get the original size of 8K dropping onto your 1080p or your 4K project settings. So if you just do right click on the mat, select scale to frame size, you know, you're going to see that it, you got a lot more room. So I'm just going to scale this out uh, just a little bit. About there, that's good. And once again, I could always go into my master settings and you know manipulate the uh, ISO bring it down a little bit and then go back into my effects control select blending mode add that's a little too much so I'm probably gonna bring this down on the opacity to uh, let's see 29% just to know it's a little bit a little bit of stuff there we got pretty lens grime, a little pretty lens grime on our footage here. It's, it's good. Little pretty trees. All right. So I'm going to add a little bit more, um, maybe one more dust. Let's see. I like, I may have pre selected these. Maybe I didn't. Yeah, let's try this one. So I'm going to do some fine particles. Drop that on. So again, I'm just stacking these uh, these dust particles. Move this up a little bit. I'm probably going to put the grime on top, so I want that grime to sit above the particles. All right. Once again, just do add. I'm probably going to bump down the opacity on this. Find our uh, 
so I'm just bumping down the uh, the opacity on the uh, on the secondary. So we got a lot of dust going on here. I'll probably tone this down just a little bit. Again, play with the opacity settings. And let's see. Now with this upper fine dust mat, I'm gonna go into my master control suite. I'm just going to go to my shadows here for a second if I shut these mats off so I can see what I'm doing. All right, here we go. So I'm just going to go with this fine dust particles here. I'm just going to crank the shadow a little bit within the red source settings. So right now I'm in the red source settings of the fine dust particles. And I'm going to bump up the flut just a little bit. Okay, so uh, uh, just to note as well, depending on what type of machine you're working with, these files, uh, the red raw files, can get quite heavy on your system. Um, if they do, you can just play back. A, you can just right-click on your screen here and go to Playback Resolution, and you can see I have it on one fourth. The resolution for this uh, tutorial okay and you're going to notice that's going to make things run a little bit smoother in this case all right so just playing around obviously to kind of see what type of uh, look and feel we want with this i'm, I'm going to go with the uh, less is more approach uh, finally i'm going to go into the anamorphic creams so i think in anamorphic creams we got a cookie flare here and if I just drop this over. So these anamorphic mats were certainly shot with anamorphic lenses. So you're going to get a different type of aspect ratio with the raw files. So when you overlay your footage, you can go to your effects control box and either do a uniform scale, which if, you know, if I were to just scale it out like that, or select uniform scale off and just in this case I can extend the height so either way there's no right or wrong just giving you those uh, little tips alright so now we have this anamorphic flare which is more a little bit more atmospheric kind of a light hanging over our subject now I can go in go to blending mode change it to add and then just probably bring it down a little bit on the opacity. So this is just a quick overview of working with the red files provided inside CineCloud. And remember, you have just so much flexibility to uh, manipulate everything from color to exposure. So my best suggestion is always just you know download these files, bring them into a project, play around, experiment. And that, that's always how you're going to learn. If you have any questions, please contact me. But hopefully introducing you to these files for people that maybe don't have access to, uh, to red files, that you'll find this new add-on for Volume 6 uh, extremely beneficial.